a tau a z equal to modified pressure at zero minus modified pressure at L equal to, uh, multiplied by R squared di divided by two plus another integration constant C1 as I said we need to find a C1 to find C1 you need boundary condition and last week I told you three kind of boundary conditions if you remember the first one is velocity at fluid solid interface supposed to be equal the second one is momentum transport at liquid um, gas interface supposed to be zero and the last will be velocity and momentum transport at liquid liquid interface supposed to be equal none of them can be applied for this case right none of them can be applied because right now we are interested in flux and only boundary condition relating to flux would be relating to liquid vapor interface which we do not have in our system so what can we do you need to look into the picture and come up with some kind of boundary condition that means you need to find out the way to determine C1 in this case um, there are two ways first you can say that tau RC is already determined to be minus mu dvz by dr okay and then you should see that dvz by dr is basically slope of the plot if you plot between r and vz at different position so at r equal to r capital r that's the wall the velocity here is supposed to be zero and the velocity um, at the center supposed to be maximum so there will be some kind of curve like this for velocity profile that you can guess so we know that velocity is maximum in the center is zero on the wall so there's, there's supposed to be inflection point so slope here supposed to be zero at r equal to zero and slope is dvz by dr so that means tau rz supposed to be zero at r equal to zero right again come again tau rz can be related using Newton law to be this equation and you know that by the form itself dvz by dr that's the slope of this part if you guess you see that the the plot here should have z should be zero at these two ends and should be maximum somewhere in the middle so therefore at the maximum point differentiation of the slope supposed to be zero so therefore you can get this one becomes zero at r equal to zero that's our boundary condition all right that's one way to do it but in the textbook they use another way they will say that its boundary condition would be at r equal to zero tau r z is not infinite what does it mean we know that tau rc is flux you can say this one is flux you can also say what that this one is stress is shear stress and shear stress can never be infinite right in conventional system you cannot have infinite number of shear stress so it's not infinite why we do that because according to this equation if r is z is zero and t is infinite then you can 
just like when you ask. If you divide everything by R, right? This one R will be dropped, this one drop out, and you have C1 over R. Okay? Can I write down something? So if you do that. Or maybe easier to explain this way. Now, at r equal to zero, this term becomes zero. Okay? R here becomes zero. These two terms combined become zero, right? At r equals to zero. Now, we know that tau rc can never be infinite. So this term combined must be zero. Because as long as this term is not infinite, anything multiplied by zero, you get zero. Okay? By under this assumption, you can solve right away that C1 is zero. Can you see that? So by doing that, you get C1 is equal to zero. Okay? Yes? This one again. Okay? Now, if you take r equal to zero, the whole term here becomes zero, for sure. Because pressure cannot, pressure will be certain number. Any number multiplied by zero, the whole term becomes zero. Alright? Then, for this term, r becomes zero. But tau rz, is not infinite. So it, what, it, it, it must be a regular number. So regular number multiplied by zero, you get zero. So the first term here is zero, the second term is zero. C1 is supposed to be zero as well. Okay? Once you already determine that C1 is zero, then you can mod divide everything by R. R here and R there will be dropped because you will no longer have C1 over R. So you will have tau Rz equal to pressure difference 2L R. This is our pressure profile. It means that, I'm sorry, not pressure profile, shear stress profile. And shear stress would be minimum at the center, if you plot, you will have a wall like this. Okay? Flow is going downward. At the center, here, tau Rz will become zero. At R equal to R, capital R, how Rz is maximum, okay? And the uh, equation is linear. So you can draw the shear stress profile, look something like this. So at this point, you have maximum shear stress. Okay? And shear is related to force. Force should go in the same direction at the direction of the flow. So force would go in this downward direction. This force is the force that liquid acts upon the solid. Okay? Next step is to change tau into velocity. Using Newton's law, tau here is minus v mu dvz by dr. That's Newton's law.
All right. If I bring minus mu down to the right hand side and integrate, bring this down here and bring the R up here, you can integrate the left hand side, you get VZ. The right hand side, you get negative P0 minus PL over 2 mu L. R squared over 2 plus another integration constant C2. So C2 must be solved using boundary condition. What kind of boundary condition can be used? That boundary condition is supposed to give you velocity at some certain position. Which position that you know velocity? On the surface. We know that boundary condition at R equal to capital R, that's on the wall. The velocity becomes zero. Okay? So zero here, R is capital R here, C2 can be solved. By doing that, you get C2, just bring everything on the left-hand side. 